Well, thank you so much, Gigi, for talking with me today and carving out this time. I so appreciate um, you coming on the podcast with me. I am so happy to be here and talk about holidays and clutter and stress. <laughs> yes, it's like this cool weather hits and you immediately, I can feel the energy shift and and yes. and then like, you know, we have all that, um, yeah, the shift in energy is like the fall arrives and then we have the anxiety and the stress and the overwhelm of the holidays and also good stuff too. But, and then we have yeah. that new year energy of like January 1st, I'm going to start everything anew and I have a new new start to everything. And, um, yeah, so I wanted, I wanted to talk about that and, yes. um, I would love if you could start, uh, us off by sharing some of the things that you see your clients struggling with around the holidays in particular. Yes. I think, you know, here's a great example. I was at a client's home and we were working on the kitchen and the kids were watching TV because we had to put a show on to keep them busy. And it was something on Disney, I don't know. <clears throat> and a commercial came on and all of a sudden I hear the kids yelling, I want that, I want that, I want that too, I want that. And it was like, oh my gosh, I can see the look on my client's face. Like, oh, here we go, you know? And it's just, it's so hard to explain, you know, to kids, I don't know, the whole present thing and Christmas and commercials and it's really a lot for all of us to deal with. Mm -hmm. So I feel for them. And, you know, I, I tell my clients set expectations early on, um, talk about the family being together, talk about giving back to the community, like, you know, give them other things to focus on instead of just the presence that they're getting. Yeah. because it does get overwhelming um it's just more stuff in the house and need a lot to be happy and often actually they're very overwhelmed when their toy rooms are full they don't yeah. even know where to start yeah so less is more and it is very difficult with social media and commercials and everywhere we go you go to target it's like all the christmas stuff is up already yeah. so it is difficult and I, you know, I just always communicate, have conversations with your children, set expectations, talk to family members, talk about what can we do instead of presents. Um, can we give you a membership to the museum? Can we give you a membership to the children's museum, um, the zoo, you know, what are some things we can do to enrich your life, but not add to the clutter and chaos? Yes. Yeah, I totally, I think we forever all the time have that struggle of accumulating more and and not we don't want to accumulate more right so it's like you mm -hmm. want to buy you feel good when you buy something and you acquire but then you have sure. too much stuff and I feel like we're always doing this on this like hamster wheel of um you know oh I want that thing and then and then you decide oh my gosh I have too much stuff in my house like every weekend my husband and I say let's minimize let's minimize you know let's get everything pared down it's just yes. ending. And then the holidays, it's like consumption overload, right? So uh, it um, really is. It's with everything. It's with food. It's with presents. It's with alcohol. I mean, it's like the list goes on and on and later ourselves, we're just going to allow ourselves this period of time. And then January will make up for it. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, it's difficult. It's very challenging. And I, I feel for like families, especially with young kids who, it's never enough though mm -hmm. no matter how much you get them they're going to be upset about something they didn't get <laughs> yes i just it's had this just conversation enough, so i had this conversation with my mom because last year my daughter we're talking like the week before christmas or the week before school break um they did some activity at school and it was like make your your santa's wish list and she literally yes. put stuff on there that we had never talked about she just kind of surprised of us course. and we're like okay, wow, well, I know what all your, yeah, in like, like, you know, we live, all our family lives out of town, so everyone had already mailed their gifts, and yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, no, you're just gonna live with disappointment this year, because you're throwing this on us, like, last minute, but, oh, it's so, it's yeah. so hard. it does get hard, but I think it's really important as a family, and as parents, and partners to come together, and just set some guidelines, okay, because otherwise, it's just, it's going to get all thrown at you. And then you'll, and then that anger builds up and then the clutter builds up. So if you have this conversation early with your family members and, 
you know, say, hey, we're trying to, you know, minimize the amount of like toys that come in, but we'd love to talk to you about experiences or they love arts and crafts and let's just focus on the things they do love um, and and having that time together and just kind of unique, unique yeah. gifts that, you know, will last longer than a couple of days and they're tired of it. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. So it sounds like what you recommend is really preparing ahead of time you know, yes. kind of like anticipating, especially when it comes to kids and they're going to want everything they see in the commercial and we get those Absolutely. target talent, like <gasps> books that come in. That's like, Oh okay. my goodness. And there's really? already arguments about who gets the book and who yeah. gets to like, which one do they want? And let's send it to Aunt Gigi or let's send it to, you know, like this is, <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's fun and I don't ever want to take away from that. But I think it's really important to set guidelines and expectations yeah. so there isn't a lot of disappointment and really bring other things into the holiday season, mm -hmm. you know, sharing with community, giving to others, spending time as family, doing fun things together. Yeah, that's great. Those are the memories you want them to have. Right. Yes. Oh, I agree. And I know we make, we enjoy making cards and cards can mm -hmm. be just a picture that we fold it in half and put it in an envelope, you know, but there's sure. all variations of that, but just the act of like making cards and sending that out um, from the kids, I think is, is really is super fun. Yeah. Um, it's about tradition. Yeah. That's, and creating that's those traditions together. They're mm -hmm. going to forget about the presents, but they're not going to forget about the traditions when they grow up. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so true. That's so true. Um, what are some other things that families can do to prepare for like an organized holiday season are there other so, things that people struggle with maybe kids who people who don't have kids or yes. other examples that you have i think one other area that i tend to get a lot of calls for is preparing meals mm -hmm. um especially if you're hosting or families coming to visit and how to handle all of that so again it, it's about planning ahead um, creating your list, creating your shopping list, using your calendar, schedule things ahead of time and not wait to the last minute and just really being prepared. Um, I mean, it's so much fun to host, but it's a lot of responsibility and I think people get very overwhelmed and, you know, keep it simple. You know, people are not expecting like four meals a day or three meals a day and yep. um, just get organized, like plan like start in September, yeah. <laughs> start oh, in July. I don't know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's also something you can recycle year after year. Mm -hmm. And also it does not all have to be on you. Mm -hmm. Have every family member bring a special dish, but you know, coordinate it. So it doesn't all have to be on one person. I think that's really important mm -hmm. is to, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay for to ask other people to bring things. And that is so hard for a lot of people to do, you know, especially yes. women. Yes. Like, oh, no, no, yes. I need to care for everyone. And we don't want to burden other people. So like, exactly. Yeah. And what but did you I think people you enjoy giving? Yes. You know, Absolutely. and contributing. They want to be part of it. Absolutely. Yes. And um, what did you mean by recycling year after year? Like the, the... So a lot of times there's family recipes that are, are often made every year. And so just having that organized shopping list, if you do it once, you're going to have it year after year. I mean, oh. my family tends to eat the same meal. <laughs> I, I don't think it's changed. I mean, honestly, it's the same meal. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, we have all those recipes. They're organized. So anybody at any point, I can say, you're in charge of this casserole, you're in charge of this. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's the inf all the information's there. So I think it's really nice to collect that. Yeah, that's a great idea. And I think I felt even when you said that, that it would be easier for me to offload something like that if I can say, okay, here's the shopping list. And I've had the best luck getting yes. these at Trader Joe's, this at Sprouts, you know, almost even like sure. where you can find things easily. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. And here's the recipe. Here's, you know, um, we created a client and I, she shops at Publix every week. So we literally created an Excel spreadsheet with the Ida aisle it was in. Oh. <laughs> so, so whoever had the shopping list, like knew exactly where to go for everything. That's so But sweet. I mean, you, 
you can get very detailed, but yeah. yeah, I think, you know, I think the more information you collect, again, it's about traditions. For the most part, you're eating a lot of the same meals, you know, yeah. same dishes and just having those written all in one place is a great thing. I think it's really, I used to make a holiday binder and I would have recipes and have like my addresses for Christmas lists. I'd have like ideas of things to do, you know, if people were coming to visit me. And I had it all organized and I loved it. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. I can just pass that on to somebody else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, here you go. <laughs> here you go. You're I in charge of this. Though, like, you're saying that about the um, grocery shopping trip and the and the aisles. I'm like, oh my God, yes. I love you so much. <laughs> I love details. So that would just be. Mm. Yeah, I think people appreciate it. And if they don't appreciate it, it's okay. It's there if they want it. It's there if, you know. They can ignore yeah, it. Yeah, they want to get it from Whole Foods. <laughs> they can run around and look yeah, for it. Can. Yeah. Well, that's exactly. great. Exactly. Do you have a um a favorite holiday related organiza organizational tool or um like a product that you like to use? Yeah. I think one thing that's really important is having some sort of gift wrapping area mm. because everybody needs to use it. And instead of running around asking where the scissors are and where the tape is and where the wrapping paper is, create some sort of, it doesn't have to be like a whole room. It could just be like a, a bot, you know, a, a wrapping organizer you keep under your bed, but having like all the things you need to wrap presents mm -hmm. in one place for the whole family to use is really important. Everything from the scissors to the tape, to the tags, to the pen. And I think that makes life a lot easier. Yeah. And I love, there's so many great, you can find what you need for the space you have. There's um, uh, hanging organizers you can put in the closet. There's ones you can store under the bed. You know, there's all sorts of really cool items out there. I think that's one of my favorite things to make sure that that part of the holidays is organized. That's awesome. Yeah, we inevitably, we just have the rolls that we do have a um, an under the bed box for the rolls of mm -hmm. um, wrapping paper. I wanted to say toilet paper. <laughs> I'm like, that's not right. So, um, and inevitably the girls will get them and now they're like swords or they'll like use them as a cane and then they're getting squished. I'm like, okay, we need to get of those course. back in the, yeah. <laughs> that's, oh, that's great though. And I'm thinking of like- yeah. <laughs> A little or maybe you have a different place <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and they, they yeah. weren't in the, yeah. and they were just out in the basement and that's why I'm like yeah that's that yeah. Um, um, yeah and I'm thinking of like a little carrier like a cubby kind of thing where you put like the scissors and the tape yeah. and stuff in it but but really everything could just go in that same under the bed box with where the yeah the I mean a lot of these organizers now um have little spots for scissors and pens and bows and it kind of you know you can find them on Amazon Target um something that has a multi like spaces to put all these different things so everything is together yes and easy to like move around the house if you have to yeah because oh, it's, it, it's always, where's this? Where's that? <laughs> never ending. It's never all ending. right here. Yeah. Um, well, I like that. Too, you know, it's like tissue. Yeah, paper, everything. It's not round, it's flat, but it, you know, you just you need to keep it safe. So I think that that's really. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I think all, all things together. And then like Christmas ornaments and things like that. I'm, I'm a big believer in color coordinating. So like all my Christmas stuff have red tops on, you know, as lids, Halloween has orange. I just think it's easier to find when you go into the attic or the garage or wherever you store stuff um, to kind of bin everything up in categories. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's really great. And I assume just plastic is fine. Do you have- Yeah, plastic is absolutely fine. Um, as long as things are contained, I think, you know, even, you could even use like large trash bags to cover your wreaths. It doesn't have to be fancy. You just want to cover it so dust doesn't get on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, just having everything contained, lights should be separate, yeah. um, you know, ornaments in one area. You just want the whole process to be easy. So when you pull all the boxes and it's time to decorate, it's fun and it's not stressful. Yeah. Um, and it's all there. And when you pack up at the end of the holidays, if there's stuff you didn't use, you didn't pull out that bin, consider maybe, you know, donating it or tossing it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 
that happens yeah. to us. We have some old ones, especially, you know, we have like the ornaments from when my husband and I were young and mm -hmm. there's just people that we don't ever pull out. And I'm trying to say, okay, can we get rid of these now? Like, are we, are we ready to part with these? And we've done a lot. We've done a lot of calling over the years and it just, it takes time yeah. and you're finally ready. It does. To mm -hmm. A little bit at a time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know you work with companies of all sizes yes. as well. And um, selfishly too, just even with my company, I'm wondering if you have any yeah. tips or things that businesses can do to prepare for the holidays. Like, not typical marketing or sales type things, but something a little more unique, yes. which is something that you like to recommend. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think it, 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 you, do you mean like employee gifts and things or client gifts, things like that? Yeah. Any of that, yeah. or, you know, like I, you try to send yeah. cards, but if there's something else, I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I think it's always nice to get cards in mind in January or February after mm -hmm. the holidays. Hmm. just they get lost in the Christmas cards and then point. I like to just include like some tips of okay you know the holidays are over here some tips for the new year um you know again kind of going back to experiences instead of gifts is always nice um you know just people appreciate that you know Here's like a, you know, even just like if it's a gift card to their favorite place to go get lunch or something. Mm -hmm. um, I think try to be, try to make it as customized as possible, but that's not always, you know, doable. Mm -hmm. But I do like sending things out in January and February and people leave it. I love that idea. They, I, think, I think they pay attention to it more. Absolutely. And it's still yeah. Our, what we try to do is we send it like in December, and it's like a thank you for the year. But I really like that, like yes. thinking about oh the new energy and yeah you've made it through there yes. and we're still here. Like you made it, we made exactly. it exactly. Look ahead exactly. I, it's like thank you for the past year and you know happy new year and and what you know here's a little uh, whether you want to do like a special service or a little discount or something. I think you know people go into like a deep depression in January and Absolutely. so they're looking for things. And so I started doing that a few years ago and I find that clients actually, you know, look at the card and read it and they're like, yeah. Oh, it's so nice to get something in February. Yeah. <laughs> like, Good. <laughs> like, I was just really late. Awesome. <laughs> I was just really lazy. You no. Know? <laughs> like, this really yeah. Awesome. Me. <laughs> it, it worked out so it takes yeah. the pressure off because I do my personal cards and now I can just like wait to do you know, my love... business cards yes. <laughs> no I mean it sounds so simple that but that makes a lot of sense and really truly it just as you're saying it I feel yeah. like I feel like yes. okay, I don't have to do it all because I care you about don't. everything I care about my family and my friends and my coworkers, of course and my patients I mean they're, they're so important to me too but Absolutely. now that kind of like freedom to say, okay, do your, your family and your friends maybe for the holidays and then do your, your business in January, yes. February. I, yeah. I love that. I agree. I mean, everyone appreciates a card. I don't mm -hmm. think people expect, you know, gifts and, and it's okay. I mean, yeah. I think we put too much pressure on ourselves. Um, another like fun thing you could do is if you do classes or workshops, you can say, Hey, I'd like to invite all my clients to this workshop I'm holding in the spring. And, you know, here's, it's going to be free to all my clients. You can do something really interesting like that, where it also still helps like build your business and keep, you mm -hmm. know, clients engaged, but in a different way. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love that. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, that was really great. You really hit on all the, the questions I had. Do you have any other um, tips or any other things that we didn't cover that you think, oh, yeah, we should we should talk about this or this is something I yeah. come across around the holidays? Well, I, you know, I think that I'm a believer in list and, you know, doing brain dumps and everything. I I think people get so stressed running around trying to get check everything off their list that they're not enjoying the holidays. And then I sense some clients start to dread it. And I hate that because it really should be a joyful time. And I think, you know, it's easy to say slow down, but I think it is really important to slow down and, you know, as a family unit, like come up with ways that you really are going to create these memories and traditions that are beyond the present opening in the morning. 
And I think that's just really important yeah. for all of us. Yeah. yeah, just to slow down and enjoy it and not get too caught up in consumerism. What's the biggest selling thing on Instagram that you must have, you know, right. just, you know, one thing that I love doing is taking a break from social media uh -huh. around the holidays. That's great. And I, I, it that can made only help a huge anyone difference. System. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I How mean, I can plan it, ahead. It, yeah. I mean, like the last, like, um, probably like three weeks. Yeah. I take the whole I month off, so I'll all. plan. Mm -hmm. No, I really don't, yeah. <laughs> which proves that no one really cares. <laughs> You're like, everyone's so stressed. But, everyone's so, yeah, like. Oh, no one, but I'll plan my business, you know, posting ahead of time, because, you know, you can schedule it. And then um, I take a break. I mean, every once in a while, I'll get in just to see things, but then I find myself, like, Oh my gosh, I love that dress. Do I need a red dress? Like, oh, look at how great that party was that they just gave. Where are they going tonight? And it wasn't healthy for me and it was taking away. So I highly recommend a social media break. Um, up to you how many days or how much you want to do, but just, you know, stepping away, putting it down, just enjoying, being yes. present. I so that's agree. my biggest, <laughs> that's like yeah. the biggest thing I can tell people. I think that's amazing. And I think we underestimate the value of our time and our presence. Yes. Right. Yes. And so even though we think, well, I'm not on that much time, you know, mm -hmm. but when your kid sees you, oh yes, honey. Okay. I'm here. And, and in my mind, I'm like, I'm trying to make eye contact and I'm like, let me just finish this email. Let me just finish this. You know, it's like, ah, just put it down. Yes. And, have, and I, I think the power of not having the social media, I think would, I still get yes. pulled by email and things. So, but obviously that's less. That's okay. But, I mean, but, that's less. I think you can also control that. You can say, okay, I'm out of the office. I'm taking this time off, you know, checking email during this period. But the social media is the stuff that it's constantly there. It's there yeah. at nine o'clock at night. It's there, you know, when we're at a soccer game. It's there when we're sitting on the couch with our family. So, I honestly, it's like the best gift you can give yourself and your family is and just your family. Take, yeah. a break. take a I, break from it. I, Let's I, stop letting other things influence what the holiday should be. Right. And then when you have that break, then you, and you know, even if someone, your listeners, if you don't want to take the social media break, but I, yeah, I love yeah. what you said, Gigi, about um, really kind of tuning into what you want to create for memories with your kids or your family. And instead of stressing about getting to the store or doing this or ordering that online and getting it wrapped, it's like, you know, let's just go to the pumpkin patch here. Let's, you know, do a family movie or, you know, we started movie yeah. night and Friday nights and oh my gosh, it is yeah. so much fun. And sometimes we, my daughter picks movies that we really, it's hard to be present with, but right. <laughs> you know, when it's, we pick movies that all of us are interested in seeing, then it's like, yes. okay, cool, this is a lot easier, but um, yes. so, so fun just to sit there and and be together even though that's not super interacting it, it is something my daughter really but you're doing it to. together right and you can you can really organize that so you could create like a december calendar and like once a week and really get the family involved and everyone okay. kind of pick an activity they want to do whether it's like decorating cookies or going to you know watching a movie but i think it's of just presenting and saying this is what we're doing Ask the kids, say, hey, we're all going to pick one thing that we want to do around the holidays and each week we're going to do. I mean, you could really get and have fun with it. I think it's really important to ask them. I agree. And I, I agree. And I think we don't do that enough. I, you know, everyone. No. I think we just, Too busy so trying we, to organize and control everything. I think you do. Well, and also, too, like you have what you liked and you remember from your childhood yes and I I just I have so much love for my kids so I want them to feel yes. happy and I want to do all these wonderful things with them but that's my idea and when we ask them and yeah. we actually let them contribute they come up with such creative things and they just they have oh, the of ideas course. That I'm like oh my gosh we could totally do that that would be super fun why don't we try that and yeah so yeah you can have structure, but still have creativity. You can you can ha you can still have an organized holiday season and structure, but with input from everybody, you right. know. And um, I, I just think that's important. I mean, you know, I think my nephew said one time, he's like, "I just want pancakes for dinner. All, it's all I want for Christmas." And we're like, "Okay, we're having pancake dinner one night," and it just brought him so much 
joy. I mean, he didn't even play with his toys. Like he was so happy. Yeah. So you can really, it's about communicating, right? And being together. Yes. Yeah. So I hear the themes of, you know, slowing down, checking in with yourself. Like what do memories you want to create? What feelings do you want to feel to, to give, you know, taking the social media break in order to create yes, that yes. space for those memories with your family. Um, planning ahead is another theme and just, and the organizational piece, like I love how you said the um, color coding the tops of the bins for things. Yes. That's genius. Yes. That's, that's yes. awesome. Or even if you can't figure that out, you can just get like paper and just like, put, okay, there's a red piece of paper on the inside. There's orange for Halloween. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, it also takes away from you have to organize everything like, Right. Okay, everybody, put the Christmas away. You know where it goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you can't read yet, but you can put it into the red bin. <laughs> you can put it into the red bin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh. Yeah. You are oh. such a wealth of knowledge. Thank you so much, Judy. Oh, I you're so very welcome. Your time. Um, and I think I forgot to say in the beginning, but everyone, Judy has been on the podcast podcast before with me. She's phenomenal. If you want to hear her backstory and hear even more, um goodness that she has to share go back and listen to episode 20 uh, from a long time ago I think like three years ago <laughs> and yeah it's it's been it's been a ride but um yeah so episode 20 with Gigi Miller just check that out if you want to hear more um from her and um yeah how can people find you how can they work with you yeah, um, I think the best way to go is to go to my website. Um, it's visionorganizing.com. And from there, they can contact me. They can connect with me on social media when they're not on a break. And <laughs> <laughs> they can read my blogs. I have lots of tips. Um, so, yeah, I think that's like the best place to go and where to find me. And now since um, COVID and everything, you are virtual as well. So I know you're like me yes. located in Atlanta, Georgia, but if you are anywhere else, you can still work with Gigi virtually. So it's incredible. Um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's just yeah. like a gift that has come out of all this madness and, you know. It really has. But, it's been, it's allowed me to connect with more people, to help more people, to learn. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's been one of the benefits of um, the past couple of crazy years. Yeah. Yes. The time warp that it has been. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Gigi. And thank, thank you, you guys. so much. Thank you for listening. Until next time, take care. Bye. Do you ever wish that you could learn the essentials of pelvic health from an experienced pelvic floor physical therapist at a fraction of the cost and from the comfort of your own home? This episode is sponsored by Progressive Pelvic Education, your source for online courses to expand your pelvic health knowledge and promote optimal wellness. Pelvic health is wealth, and there is a lot of essential information about our pelvic floor that isn't taught in school. Learn what to do and not to do to avoid the inconvenience and pain of pelvic floor issues in a self-paced course you can take anywhere. Visit progressivepelviceducation.com to get access today.